I like, I like, I like, I like, I like to ride my bicycle, bicycle. I like, I like, I like, I like, I like to ride my bike. In the summer of 2016, our family rode from Amsterdam to Copenhagen. Here's the last leg of the trip in Denmark. We started our ride in Helsingborg, Sweden, and then took a short ferry ride across to Helsingor, Denmark. And the first thing we did there is go to Kronberg Castle, which was super cool. It was a really short day of biking, only 20 kilometers from Helsingor to Rungstedgard, where we stayed in a beautiful hotel in the country. We were all starting to realize our trip was coming to an end, and we were actually wanting more cycling. Our legs were all ready to go. I'm sure we would have been happy to cycle 80 or 100 kilometers on these beautiful roads. Oh, this looks all right. Chocolate. In Rungstegdar, the hotel was situated in a beautiful spot in the countryside. Lovely setting for walks, and the breakfast was awesome. Now we know why the pastries are called Danishes. The next day, we had to ride from Rungstegdar to Copenhagen, which was about 40 kilometers. You can see improvements in the works here. On the right, that's the old bike and pedestrian lane. Over there, you can see that used to be a very small, and that whole bike and pedestrian area became the pedestrian area. And then they took over some of the road here, put that for cars. On the other side, they're laying brand new pedestrian and bike lanes. Coming into Copenhagen. Bike lanes and bikes everywhere. Top light for cars, bottom light for bikes. Is it here, Kyle? Is it here? Here we are approaching our Airbnb where we stayed in Copenhagen for a few nights. Copenhagen is said to be the greatest city in the world for cycling and we'd have to agree it has incredible cycling infrastructure. Like this amazing bridge built just for cyclists. Also neat to hear Kyle start to figure out one of the reasons why it's so great to have the EU. Listen to what he says here. Does the Danish government even know that we're in Denmark? No. I don't think they care. Another common feature here in Copenhagen is parked cars parked to the left of the bike lane. So the parked cars give added protection and separation to the bike lane. It's up on a level and also protected by parked cars. No cars seem to park 
on the bike lane. I do not think that would be well tolerated here. You can see the omnipresent tri-level streets with ramps all over the place. What? Lower level, next level up, and the top level for pedestrians. You can see there's two little smooth things. Those are for strollers, so it's a smooth ride for the strollers along the cobblestones. We've seen that in a lot of places here. Here we go. Not only are there lots of bike paths beside the roads in Copenhagen, there's also lots of bike paths all on their own, like this beautiful path by the canal. One of the most impressive things about cycling in Copenhagen is their commitment to the bike lane even through large construction projects like this. You can still see there's a separated bike lane that was kept running even through this major construction area. Then as we cross the street, we rejoin the existing cycling infrastructure here with a separated lane on the left. Here's another great example of a temporary separated bike lane built right in the middle of a construction area. Of course, the result of all this amazing cycling infrastructure is bicycles, 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 and more bicycles. Copenhagen was our last stop on our tour and we had a few days to enjoy the sights of the city. One of the things we did is go to Tivoli Gardens, this very old and very fun amusement park, and we did roller coasters and then bigger roller coasters. Another thing we had time to do is visit a district in Copenhagen called Christiania, which is an autonomous anarchist district uh, inhabited by about a thousand people. In 1971, this former military base was occupied by these people. They've been living there ever since with their kind of own anarchist government going on. There's been a lot of controversy about the area. It was a really interesting area to explore. Parts of the area we were forbidden from taking photographs or video of because of the cannabis trade that goes on there. The Danish government is aware of what's going on there and there have been conflicts with the police in the past. Also in Christiania, there's some very interesting cargo bikes built, and we visited one of the factories that makes those. We had a few days in Copenhagen, so we spent a lot of the time just riding around the city, seeing what it's like to bike in the greatest biking city in the world. And one of the days was really rainy, but even on a rainy day like this, the amount of cyclists was incredible.
One of the things that's so nice about cycling in Copenhagen is the wide bike paths allow people to interact with each other socially as they're riding along. As you can see, these two women just riding along, having a nice chat with each other. We saw tons of whole families on single bicycles too. On our last night in Copenhagen, I noticed that there was an interesting looking club in the basement across the street of where our Airbnb was. And as it turned out, it was an arcade, an old school 1980s style arcade with all of my old favorite games. So I finally got to beat my kids at video games for a day. Well, our trip was almost over. It was time for us to make our last ride. And our last ride was gonna be to ride to Copenhagen Airport and pack our bikes up and head back home. But again, Copenhagen did once again amaze us with its bike paths all the way to the airport. In fact, it took us all the way to the front doors of the airport. Check what terminal we're in. It's a two lane bike path now. Alright, let's have a look. Excuse me. Do you know which terminal ice land there? Uh, three. Three. three yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very one. much. Yeah, a little bit further. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Oh wait, that was a video, sorry.